Welcome, golf fans, pursuers of knowledge and the almighty dollar. This is your golf guru bringing you the 2021 Honda Classic. This is my sleepers, ownership projection, fades, hot topics, everything you're going to need to get that final lockdown for your GPP, for your bets. And if you've not put your one and done in, uh, I'm not going to probably help you out here. I've already kind of gave you, well, I think I picked Burger. Um, or Neiman, but I just switch it to Neiman now because on that, on the hot topics, Daniel Berger, it is official. He has withdrawn. He pulled out of the Pro-Am, I believe it was yesterday. Uh, he had a, a MRI done on the ribs uh, Monday and had some people asking me in, in, in short, um, yeah, I, I was I already telling them there's no way he's going to play in this. He's not going to risk it. And you've got the Masters upcoming. you got a WGC event next weekend. Um, so no shocker. So now this is the officially the worst field ever at the Honda Classic and maybe, uh, you know, it's rivaling like the Puerto Rico Open. But I'm not going to be negative. Let's be positive here. And so let's just get through this and try to find the guys that can perform in this tournament because there's still money out there to make. Uh, as I always mentioned, I uh, watched the Tuesday practice pressers. And uh, the only out of them, you know, Neiman talked, but there was really nothing there. But the two guys here, uh, Westwood and Padre, some interesting uh, information just for your own knowledge and save you about 30 minutes each of your life. But um, Lee Westwood just mentioned he, had, he took a son who is going to be on the bag for this weekend. So there'll be no uh, Allen, uh, which I don't know from a superstition standpoint, that might be something, uh, but she'll still be around there. But it is a home game for Lee Westwood. But he did take his son, as I mentioned, to Augusta to go play the Masters, to go play the course. Uh, he said he played like 54 holes, which probably wasn't great, so he's feeling exhausted. But he does have an afternoon tea time on tomorrow. Um, loves the course. It's a home game. He's one of the better players, especially from our recent results and even track record on this course. So I'm not saying don't play him. I'm just giving you the information, and you got to kind of figure it out from there. Uh, Padre Harrington. Uh, what's interesting is Padre has won this tournament twice. He loves the wind. Uh, I think all the European guys are going to be very live and even probably a little chalky for this tournament uh, because of the wind. And, and just so you know, we're going to talk about weather. Uh, I've got an update for you. Um, but anyways, you know, you got to kind of figure that out. I mean, Padre, it's not like his game is where it was. Just like uh, Steve Stricker, who's in the tournament, you got the two Ryder Cup captains just here to check out their players. And, you know, who knows, maybe, maybe make a cut. They both could be live to make the cut. Um, so anyways. Let's get into the weather. So this is just pulled. I'm recording this around 5 p.m. Eastern time on Wednesday. And looks like the main issue is going to be Thursday and for sure Thursday afternoon. Um, it doesn't look like the morning is going to be any prize picnic. But I might look at rostering teams that have the early tea times on Thursday. And then they'll have the, you know, the later tea times on Friday, which looks like you know the winds won't be as bad. It looks like Saturday is going to be pretty calm. Comparative, you're going to get some rain during the evenings. So the course might actually play a little easier come Saturday, Sunday than what we were thinking. But it's just what I'm seeing is the narrative I'm going with. I just got to find guys that can get to the weekend. And uh, so, yeah, and to uh, pull this information, use WinFinder and pull up the old Port Cove Marina. It's like five miles from uh, PGA National. So, Again, just to keep yourself updated, but you're getting the latest and greatest weather report from me. Okay, so I am pulling this information just so you know from Fantasy National. And if you uh, are looking to do your own analysis, I highly recommend they don't sponsor me. I don't have no affiliation, but it's the tool that I use and that I like the most, as you've probably seen if you uh, have uh, tuned into this before. Okay, so we're out the bat. Pretty much anybody uh, from 9,000 up is going to be chalky. Um, you know, you got Woodland that pulled out. I already mentioned Berger pulled out. Um, you know, Doc Redmond pulled out. And I even believe there was somebody else that actually, oh, Scott Piercy also withdrew, which I don't think that's updated on here. That's, you know, whatever. It uh, wasn't like he was uh, someone that I was just hankering to play. But just to give you an idea. Um, and so, I mean, anybody at the top, I mean, I'd like to say, hey, pivot from here, pivot from there. But you can see Joaquin Neiman right now is, you know, looking to be like 30% owned. That literally could go up because of Daniel Berger. I'm guessing M's ownership's going to go up. Westwood's uh, ownership's going to go up. You know, I might be taking some more flyers on Russ Henley. I was, you know, a little down on him because of how bad he's been off the tee. Same with Scott, but maybe, you know what, maybe Ross or these two guys, 
you know they can hit the irons they can you know can can putt uh well at least one of them henley can putt well on bermuda uh scott just can get super hot but anyways it's just going to be difficult and like i said from the beginning um we're going to have to we're going to be uncomfortable with some of the lineups that we're putting in and i'm already kind of like i'm not going to be playing a lot of gpp this weekend uh, i'm going to focus more on the bets and you know because i think I think anyone can win this tournament to some degree. I'm not saying BJ Singh or Luke Donald is going to pull this thing out, but um, it's not going to shock me if it comes in 100 to one, uh, just because of what the field looks like and the weather and the way this course plays. It's it's just like an alternate event, and uh, you know you just never know who can pull it off. So with that said, um, I'm just going to bring up something. So the the highest owned guy that I saw in the six thousands, where is he at? Mr. Jim Furyk, which is a little shocking because there's a lot of guys I think that are a little more talented, but also do the same thing he does. Um, you know, we'll talk about those guys, the plotters that, you know, are pretty steady from T to green and, you know, just whatever they do with the putter. But right now he's at saying, you know, 14% ownership. thought that was pretty interesting. Um, you got Cagely, who's, you know, someone that I'm interested in. Uh, up there, you know, Streelman, which, you know, I'm not focusing. I'm going to focus 7,500 on below, but, um, you know, it's also someone I already mentioned, him and Steele, uh, the doppelganger, as far as I'm concerned. You know, even Mike, even Keegan Bradley could literally be on 15%. So that just shows you what the field is. Okay, but funny enough, if you want to jump on the Ricky Fowler train, he's uh, just a little bit over 5% uh, projected to be owned. So, you know, you never know. Um, like I said, I think I'm going to just throw – my lineups and even from a fade perspective, you know, I don't even have, I'm not going to go through fades because it's going to come down to ownership projections for me from a GPP perspective. Um, you know, when I go to put my teams in uh, late tonight, I'll just see where the ownership projections are. and I'm just going to kind of go from there. I mean, even Martin Keimer, like if he's at 2.5, you know what, why not? Um, I, I don't think there's a whole lot of difference between what Martin Keimer can do and literally, you know, uh, you name it. I mean, I don't, except for maybe, like I said, a Neiman or an M, uh, I think it, it's all pretty equal. Um, I'm also going to be building teams, uh, you know, like a bomber team. I'm going to have the plotter team. So, you know, of course, Wyndham Clark, which has been struggling on approach, but you know what, put them on, uh, put them together with your uh, Seb Straka and your Harry Higgs and uh, I don't know who else. Uh, Brennan Steele, actually, funny enough, has been hitting the ball pretty far off the tee. Uh, hard to believe, but that is true. But yeah, I don't know. If you're putting a bomber team together, you know, you got the Glickick. Uh, I don't know, Will Gordon's in. I think Will Gordon's in this. Yeah, Will Gordon. So you got Gordon, Glickick. You know, that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to put together the guys that can bomb it, see what happens. But the guys that, you know, I know can get around the course, uh, I'm just going to try to build some of the lineups like that. All right, enough on that. Let's go and talk about some of these guys. All right, so my first guy. So I, I went through, I actually have 26 guys that we're going to look at, uh, some a little deeper than the other. I'm not going to spend all this time, um, but we're going to kind of sift through these guys. Uh, but occasionally I do like, um, you know, I was played her twice, made a cup both times. Uh, let's just click on him because it's not showing. I think he's like neutral. Nope. So he almost gains a half a stroke uh, over historical in, in heavy wind. So I like that. His best putting surface, right, is how you how you spin the information. But his best putting surface is Bermuda. What does that mean? You know, he's not a good putter, um, but at least – over his history, if he's going to do something, it is going to be a Bermuda, so that's a positive. Um, you see a stroke gain has kind of been trending down. But over his last five events, T to Green has been good. The putter has always been, like I said, not the best. And, of course, he had a, he made the cut at the players, uh, which is a positive. He had a 41st. And then if we go pull up the comp courses that I've been looking at, he had a 19th at the Sunny recently, which, again, easier course. But – Similarities uh, from a distance, Bermuda, uh, wind, uh, you got similarities there. I mentioned the Honda, he's played it twice. He's already made the cuts on both of those. But I look at RBC, a miscut, and uh, 48. So that's what he's done at RBC. We look at the players, he had a 41st uh, recently. It's the only time playing it. We look at the Wyndham, miscut both times, which is it's always funny when you pull up some guys that miss, miss the cut at Wyndham. I just really feel like that's a pretty simple course and never played a WGC event, but occasionally I do like, um, Ryan Moore is another guy that I'm interested in. Um, you know, it's done. Okay. Here's made the cut three out of, but nothing great, but made the cut three out of the five times. 
Again, you're gonna be looking at this information, just what I went over in my top breaks. So here, I probably should explain that. Um, the top five keystroke indicators that I'm looking at within this view um, are these two distances, because this is where a lot of the shots are gonna be coming in. Approach is huge. Uh, the guys, if you saw my previous two shows, that's the area that really stuck out if they'd done well uh, on their approach to the green. Uh, they had good success here. The off the tee around the green and the putting doesn't have to be significantly better. It just has to be neutral to maybe gaining a few strokes, a couple strokes. Um, they got to do well on par fours because there's a ton of them here. And they got to hit the ball in the fairway. So that's the key things. So if I see a lot of green there, that's what the first step again that uh, piques my interest. And then it's, okay, what do they do on Bermuda? What do they do on when? How have they done at the comp courses? Um, and then, of course, my mind of knowing these guys and what they've been doing. So put all that together and we're going to you know, figure out uh, who we want from a sleeper perspective. So back to Ryan Moore. Uh, let's go look into him because he is someone that I'm interested in. Can play in a win, getting about a half shot on the field. Is positive. Uh, does better on POA, but is you know positive surfaces, Bermuda, barely. He does the things that I like. He can get to the green. So T to green, uh, he's good. Around the green, I wish was better. And then putting is kind of, eh, whatever. I'm not too worried about that. But just recently, he did gain three strokes on Bermuda at the players. I like, you know, I like that. Uh, he was positive around the green, but, you know, that makes me a little nervous on approach. But typically, that's where he does well. And you can see that here, gaining two strokes. Uh, back to the three, I'm open in Minnesota. He gained seven strokes. So <clears throat> that's all pretty solid. And then we go look at the history at the comp courses. Let's look at that again. I know he missed a cup, but I was curious. Okay. Yeah, I don't even count that. So it was back in 2013. So I am not worried about that. We already looked at the Honda. You know, nothing great, but it's made a cut three out of five times. RBC, uh, which I think is a good comp course. And those are recent last three events there on this cut. But, you know, 16th and a 41st. And that's a course, again, that you got to plot your way around. Uh, the players it's actually had a good track history there, which is, you know, not easy to do. And I think there's a lot of similarities here, of course. And let's look at the Wyndham. Best finish was a six. And lastly, has he played a WGC? I'm looking for the Mexico event that they just had, the work day, I should call it. And here they call it Mexico. But specifically St. Jude, which is played at TPC Southwind, which is a, very, a good comp course. But that's not on here, so no need to worry. But I do like Ryan Moore. Oh, my God, Matthew Neesmith. So Norlander and Neesmith, and if you've been watching me for a while, I cannot get these guys right. The model says they should do well. Uh, everything, you know, points in a good direction. And then I think I even took Norlander off here. But Norlander's not a bad play. Maybe at a first-round leader, you might want to bet him. Um, the guy from a statistical all lines up, and he can play in the wind. I'm talking talking about Norlander. This is, ne this is Neesmith I'm pulling up, but I'm just letting you know because I think I removed him because I just can't stomach it anymore. But you see Neesmith also gains over a stroke in the high winds. Uh, neutral on Bermuda, you know, solid tee to green, struggles when he gets around it or on it. Um, you know, had a nice run right here uh, back in early February and then has missed the last two cut events, which is, you know, the Florida swing, of course. Why not? So what do you, you know, what do you do with that, right? Um, if we go look at the Sony, you know, he's made a cut there once before. That was uh, 2020. The Honda, he's played there once last year, had a 38. So, you know, at least he has gotten around the course once. RBC, you know, same thing, like a 30th, um, which is good. That's, you know, it's a tight track. You got to be on with your stuff if you're going to get around that course. The players, of course, recently he missed a cut. And I don't think he's played a WGC event. Nope. So, Neesmith is an option. Um, you know, if I am going to fade him, which I'm not saying I am going to completely fade him, but if I was going to, I'd tell you, bet him, you know, or definitely get him into GPP lineups because I can't get the guy right. James Hahn, all right. Uh, everything here looks real good, all green. He loses a little bit uh, in the wind. And uh, the last two times, which has been a little while, um, he has not made the cut here. But, you know, some decent form. He's got a 15th and a 10th. Uh, he did make the cut at the players. Let's just pull up. I'm just curious from a putting perspective what it says here. Yeah, so he doesn't do anything from a putting perspective. Uh, but the la last five, he is gaining on approach, losing off the tee, 
gaining with the putter. And you can see this is uh, last three events. Well, let me uh, let me verify that. The last event. So he didn't play the other two Florida tracks. He didn't play a concession, um, the WGC Workday in uh, Mexico concession, whatever you want to call it. He also didn't play the API, the Arnold Palmer, but he did play the players, did make the cut. And, of course, he had that great run uh, there in, uh, at the Waste Management in Phoenix, but, of course, just had a couple uh, hit that water ball. I think Speed did the same thing uh, on the same hole. So that kind of what he kind of fell apart. Um, that's probably enough. Richard Wierenski, I think, is interesting. Now, funny enough, he doesn't gain in the wind. Um, everything is funny from a – everything here looks good. Of course, the drives make me a little nervous. Um, his recent form has been good, right? He had that t tie for fourth uh, at the Arnold Palmer, and then he competed – at the 3M Open with Michael Thompson. You know, barely gains on Bermuda, but it says here, um, and this, you know, the win stuff, so I think the win information, you, you kind of take it with a grain of salt, but, um, you know, it's saying over history of his crazy windy that he doesn't gain strokes, he's losing it a little bit. Um, but, you know, for the field that we got going on here, um, you know, he's had some solid, you know, past five or six tournaments, uh, except for the players, and I wouldn't, hold that too much against him. Um, you know, if he plays like he did a year, uh, you're good to go. So, and I think he's, what is this? I just want to see what he is from a chalky. So he's about 8% own. Um, I'm not going to have a, probably a ton of them, but put it this way. If he was an early tea time tomorrow morning, I'd probably roster him a little more. I have no idea. I haven't looked at the tea times for these guys. That literally might have a major impact, just a way to take that next level of, weeding out players uh for me uh sabatini um you know he can play to win almost gains a stroke uh of course slovakian but you know uh the guy's a grinder i kind of look at him he's my doppelganger for louis Usazen. um you know not as good as a player by any stretch but uh can get hot with a putter and as you see you know he had a tenth at the farmers and then it was like cut city but he did make the cut at the players um Let's pull him up and just take a gander. I don't think on, yeah, he's, he's not positive on any putting surface, but Bermuda is his best putting surface. But I do like, like I said, what's come up when it shows in the wind or on difficult courses. Uh, he gains, uh, or difficult rounds, he gains strokes. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Let's take a look at what he's done at some of the comp courses. So at the Sony, good, pretty good track record. I mean, holy cow, he's played there. A lot. Never won it, but he had a second. Uh, but miscut recently. But, you know, before that, solid track record there. The Honda. You know, he's got a solid record here. Oh, and I didn't even notice that. So, didn't know Rory. Or, I'm um, sorry. Yeah, Rory Sabatini actually won the Honda back in 2011. Huh. Swear I did not. I didn't go that far back. Good to know. So, he does have a good track record here. See? You learn something new every day. That's why we do this. All right, what other, sorry, I'm scrolling all over. What other course? Uh, the RBC. Good record there now. And again, I think that's, I think this course might even be a better comp course in my own mind than the Sony, uh, just because I know how tough this course can play. So that's good to see. So yeah, uh, I like, uh, I like uh, what Sabatini is showing me here. The players already know he made the cut recently. The Wyndham. Had some good success there. Maybe an outright bet we need to throw on Rory. Uh, Sabatini, I didn't even uh, look at that. Outright to win the thing, man. All right. So, yeah, Rory is definitely someone to think about. Uh, I did look at Nick Taylor. I'm not going to go into him, but he, uh, you know, he could be, he's positive, uh, almost gains. This was what was interesting. So, he won, of course, the ATT Pro Am two years ago now, and, um, you know, just was ridiculous to play lights out. Um, but he does gain a stroke uh, in the wind against the field. He had played her once before, not last year, but the year before 2019 had a 30th. And just for your own information, he can putt well on bent. Uh, actually, it's funny where he won his tournament was on POA. But uh, Bermuda is, uh, is slightly, slightly negative. So I don't think I would really concern myself about that. Ches Reby, which has got a pretty heavy owned... Uh, project on ownership because again i think a lot of the guys if you are uh, a student i would say or 
of of the game and know these guys. He fits into, uh, like I said, the Ryan Armour, Brian Moore camp, right? The guys that usually are very straight, even Brian Harmon. Uh, it's funny, the, the one person that I was shocked that didn't play this tournament was Paul Casey. Because if he wanted to win, I honestly believe Paul Casey would win this tournament hands down. I mean, he's won back-to-back at Valspar. Everything that he does fits this course to a T. Um, so, if I, like I said, I think if he, of course, was in this field, he'd be the most expensive. But anyways, tournament history. Um, you know, Chez has only made the cut here once out of four times. Um, and his, you know, recent kind of form has been really off. Uh there was a time when Ches Revi used to be like a birdie king. It was kind of so Bermuda's his worst surface, but not ridiculous. Uh, you know, he's not negative in the wins uh, from that information. Just wanted to scroll through because of uh, I just wanted to take a look. So his last really good showing was at the Safeway, um, and that's interesting. So this event here, WGC St Jude, uh, is at TPC Southland. So. You know, something to think about. And then at this tournament, Memorial, uh, I believe that's when that's the one Rom won, right? Yeah. So that was at he had a crazy, uh, crazy good Sunday. That was um, some crazy conditions. So that's interesting. I mean, you know, there was some uh, some rough weather there. I don't say rough. It was it was breezy. Put it that way. So kind of do whatever you want with that with Chess. Um Mark Hubbard, you know, Mark Hubbard would be a good pick uh, if you want to do uh, like, you know, first round leader, second round leader. Um, I would actually pick Mark Hubbard for first round leader. Uh, the guy, you know, just has those those crazy one rounds and then can't really string them together. He is positive, uh, gaining almost a stroke in the wind. Neutral on Bermuda. I just want to pull up, uh, what's the last tournament? Let's just pull API up. I just want to see what his first round was. Uh, nothing really great there. So I might have to go back a little bit. Just trying to prove a point here where if you pull... Da, 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 da. Um, maybe it's waste management. i just been noticing that for some odd reason, he would just have really good... Yeah, there you go. So round one, a 63 and then a 73. And then he ends. So you're playing a showdown. Hubbard is someone I let the book ends. And I've noticed this uh, over time that he tends to uh, have a good opening round and a good finishing round, but typically in the middle can't, can't make it up. Lucas Glover, I think is someone you could look at terrible putter, uh, but can hit fairways and pretty deadly with the irons. I put him in the Jason Duffner and uh, JB Holmes when they're healthy camp. Um, terrible putters, but if they get hot with the putter, they could be, you know, not too bad. Tommy Lewis, you know, you can see he's all red in the areas I was looking at, except for this one, but he can't get hot. He's been uh, in a kind of a stink fest lately. Uh, but again, he's a European player, uh, can play in the wind. So if you're putting that team Europe together, so I'm going to take a flyer on, uh, John, huh? John, what John, huh? Uh, you know, been playing some solid golf and, uh, played here five times at least that I'm seeing I'll pull it up just so we know because uh, that only gives you the last five records so let's go pull up the Honda yeah I thought I thought he might play here a little more so he's got he's got some decent history here missed a cut the last time um what well, while we're on huh let's go and check the Sony so last two times at the Sony he's missed a cut but had a decent, I would say, form before that. RBC he had a third place in 2014 and a 23rd in 2018, but it's been a while. All right, look, the players doesn't doesn't do so hot. The players and was not invited this year. The Wyndham, been a while. And WGC, yep. Okay, so do with it, do with that what you'd like. But Jaha, huh? right now, 6% ownership. We already talked about Furyk. Um I have nothing against the guy. He used to be the – him and Matt Kuchar, if you needed just a free bingo spot, you'd plug those guys in. But it hasn't been that way. Both of them almost have been trending down at the same time. Um, Kevin Percy is interesting. He's uh, he's getting along there, you know. I actually think – I think I talked about him for the players. Is uh, I think he was like men price or 6,100. So if you get down in this room, Cameron Percy, uh, and I believe he's an – I think he's an Aussie. Uh, so typically they do all right in the wind. 
it says he's negative, but barely. But the guy's just been plucking along. So, again, Pedro Harrington, I already talked about him a little bit in the beginning. Um, you know, you're not going to see, but he won here in 2015. Let's jump into Padre. Uh, Bermuda is his worst surface, but, you know, again, I've seen a guy get pretty hot with any surface on the putter. But this is the, you know, and this is funny. This is why I said sometimes the information gets pulled up. He likes to play in the wind. He likes tough courses. So don't believe that BS. Same with Matt Wallace. For some reason on here, it comes up negative. So I don't know exactly uh, how that all works. But, um, you know, what I guess also he mentioned, I don't think I mentioned this, was that he got COVID somewhere around this period of time. And this was when he was battling it, trying to get back. Uh, and he said he was fighting it during this period. And then he started to get his game back. So, you know, don't let this throw you off. Um, I'm not saying he's going to play like this, where he's going to, you know, gain, uh, you know, three three strokes tee to green or whatever. But uh, I'm going to be playing him. I like guys like him for this kind of tournament. And uh, he can be sneaky, you know, right now less than it's like 1% owned. Um, so just someone to think about, oh, and he did win here. Just so you know, sorry, I just double clicked on that. Uh, let's see here. We pull up the Honda. So he won in 2015 and he won it and way back in 2005, but, and I'm not saying he's nowhere near the form he used to be in. Um, and he's missed a cut the last three times. So you could also say that, but just sneaky suspicion that he, uh, might do all right. Grayson Murray. Purely put him up. If you're putting a bomber group together, uh, you know, he's made a cut here twice. You know, he said that T3, uh, Porter, the guy just crushes it off the T. The rest of it's pretty suspicious, but um, he also gains on the wind. So just side note, I already mentioned, you know, Jason Duffner fits in, like I said, the JB Holmes, uh, the smell the glove, Glover camp, uh, can play in the wind. And uh, it's, you know, it's whatever his putter is doing that day. He had a, a 36 at their own Palmer. What's his pass? And he's, I don't want to state that, but so far it says he's made the cut here every time. Let me go find that out real quick for you. The Honda. Da, 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 da. Wow. He has. He's made the cut here every time since 2004. That's interesting. I mean, that's something to think about. Uh, I'm not saying he's in the same form, but it wasn't, I wouldn't have said back in last year that he was in that great of form either. So, he might really like it here. Um, Seb Straka, I'd put him in the bomber camp. Uh, ranks number one in this crucial uh, approach area right now out of this field. You can play in a win. He is, oh, I just looked at this. He played at University of Georgia, but it, I can't remember. He might be from Australia. Oh, it's going to bother me. Um, but yeah, someone that you know could play. Bronson Borgun, I've seen him play in some tough conditions. It says here that he's not that great in the wind. His tournament history is eh, but he might also be someone you think of. Um, Roger Sloan was interesting. You know, he can play in the wind. He's had a T30 here in a cut. Uh, Patty Perez falls a little bit under that. Uh, JB Holmes Duffer, you know, good, typically somewhat good T to green. Uh, the driver, you know, I should, let me rephrase that. Really good with the irons and long irons. The driver can go either way, and same with the putter. I've seen him get real hot with the putter or not. He had a fourth here once, but that was way back, and I can't really count that. And then he's just been hit or miss. Um, Scott Stallings is a lot of green. Doesn't look too bad, but negative in the wind. Sam Ryder, that's interesting. I didn't know it was that much. Somehow it's saying he gains when it is windy AF as fuck. Almost two strokes. And Bermuda is a positive surface. Well, let's do a little more research. So, like I said, I just kind of quickly pulled some of these guys up that looked interesting. So, at the Sony, two out of four. With the Honda, had a 53rd. RBC had a 41st recently. What about the Wyndham? Two out of three ain't bad. And WGC never playing. So, that's interesting. Sam Ryder. Um, I think he had a pretty, what, where did he just show up? He had the farmers, he had a T10. So recent, you know, not too terrible of recent form. Um, someone you might want to think of. Brian Stewart actually uh, went to school and went to college, grew up in Michigan uh, and went to college at Oakland University. And 
I think Brian Stewart. So I, I, I'm going to tell you this, guys, every time for the first day to lead the first round, put down Brian Stewart. Something about the guy. Uh, he likes the first day of events. Can't The rest of it's not good, but um, I've already got a bet on him for the first round. Let Or first round leader. Um, let's go take a look at some background on Mr. Brian Stewart. So this is interesting. I think I do remember looking at it. So he does really well at the Sony Open. I mean, you know, last two hasn't been that great, but he's had a really good track record there. Again, easier course, but similar. Can similar. Uh, he's done all right at the Honda. I mean, uh, for for that price tag, he's played at what one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. Played there nine times, made the cut six times, missed it three times. Uh, that's right. I can do math. And RBC. Pretty good. Made a cut every time except one. So it's at seven, seven tries. Uh, the players recently made the cut. Nothing great there, but, you know, that's very recent. The Wyndham, we'll say 50-50 on that one. And I don't know if he's ever played in the W. Yeah, a long time ago. So what I would say with Brian Stewart is, you know, throw him in some lineups. But uh, first round leader might not be a bad bet. I think it was like 100 to 1. Uh, CT Pan, I highlighted. Again, he's all green in these areas, so of course it piqued my interest. I always go back to CT Pan. The one win that sticks out in my brain was that RBC Heritage. Uh, don't make a liar out of me. I think that was, what, 2019? Yeah. <clears throat> this is where it even Shane Lowry, um, I think, ended up in third. And I've, I've mentioned this, I think, on my previous show. You know, DJ went into Sunday leading that tournament, and it just fell apart. I think he ended up 15th or something like that. And CT Pan, CT Pan won. Of course, when you win, it takes a lot of things um, that you do very well. But just note to self uh, that he, it does have it in him. Now, if you look at everything else, doesn't you know do that great in the win. Bermuda's his worst surface. Uh, if we pull up the Sony, miscut the two times he's been there, and the one that was recent at the Honda. We'll say 50-50. Last two times, not so good. But before that, was doing all right. I already showed you RBC. The players recently he missed a cut, but you know made a cut the other two times. The Wyndham, he has a second place back in 2018 and a 69th recently. And I'm pretty sure he is. Oh, he did. So he played in WG St. Saint Jude, the one that I was looking for, and uh, did not do well, I guess. Uh, well, I guess that was a technically it should have been a no cut event, so he'd probably end up in dead last. Let's go see. I am curious. Pretty close to dead last. Uh, there's CT Pan. I mean, he didn't play horrible, but on that course, you got to do a little better than uh, shooting seventies all day. Who won it that year? JT. Okay. Alrighty. Um, and last but not least, Troy Merritt. Uh, somebody might want to look at his uh, recent form is eh. Uh, tournament history, though, he's made the cut twice. And, um, you know, everything's positive here that I was looking at. And he also gains in the wind. And I don't think he is positive on any putting surface. Oh, he is on Bermuda and Poa. And, like I said, complained to win, almost gaining a stroke. Well, while we're here, let's go take one quick look at Mr. Troy Merritt. So not so great. Made the most recent cut at the Sony. We already looked at the Honda. My apologies for that. It's done pretty decent at the RBC. Had a third and a tenth and then a 70th recently. His doppelganger for me is Corey Connors. I think they look a lot alike in their game to some degree. Um, this can be familiar. We'll say similar. Um, the Wyndham and WGC St. Jude. No. Okay, that's it. Okay, so my top five sleepers. The recap is you got Mr. Ryan Moore leading off, KH Lee, Rory Sabatini. Uh, again, uh, would not be a bad idea. Maybe throwing out right. Didn't know he had a win here. You got Padre Heron, the uh, crafty old veteran that likes to play in crappy weather. And you got C.T. Pan, who won the RBC, and could shock us all. Who knows? And my uh, told you I was going to give you another pick. Of course, I mentioned Brian Stewart. I think he could be uh, do well around here. I don't think he's going to win it. I don't think he's even probably going to top twenty. But put him for a first round leader. You might be uh, might have, might be happy. And that's it.
sorry that it took a little longer than usual. Um, but you know, I thought we'd work our way through that. I thought, you know, you get to see some things, learn some things, uh, make your own decisions. This tournament, uh, let's get through it. Let's hopefully do well and make a few bucks, put it in our pocket so we can go spend it at the Masters. And uh, I'm not sure what they're doing for the WGC Dell match play. I've seen that uh, I think DraftKings and FanDuel will do something. So, And also you got March Madness to watch this weekend. So happy St. Paddy's Day, by the way. And uh, if you are new uh, and enjoyed that, I apologize. I was a little humdrum today because, uh, you know, it's a little hard to get excited for this one. We're just coming off the player's hangover. But again, I'm gonna I definitely uh, have some money involved and uh, definitely want to do the analysis for you guys. So if you liked what you saw, click the like button. Don't click the unlike because it wasn't my best, uh, but share it with whoever you think also would want to be depressed. And uh, subscribe if you've not subscribed. It means the world to me. Hit me up on Twitter sphere if I can give you any help with anything you're trying to do from one and done, bets, uh, GPP, whatever it is. I will do my best to give you the advice that hopefully uh, works out well. All right, guys. All the best to us. Take care and talk to you guys on Monday. <laughs>